As always, please pause the video and try the question on your own before moving on. We know that all three bulbs each have a power of 60 watts and a voltage of 120, and from that information we can determine the resistance of each bulb. And to do that, we recall that power is equal to the potential difference squared divided by the resistance. Let's solve this equation for resistance. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by R, and then divide both sides of the equation by P. And now we can plug in the known values of the potential difference, which was again 120 volts, and the power, which was 60 watts. And when you calculate that, you should get approximately 240 ohms for the resistance of each of the three bulbs. What we will do next is simplify the circuit, and to do that we will notice that R2 and R3 are in parallel with one another, and so we can calculate the equivalent resistance of them according to the following equation. Plugging in the known values for R2 and R3, adding together because they already have a common denominator, and then inverting both sides of the equation would show us that the equivalent resistance of R2 and R3 is equal to 240 divided by 2, which of course simplifies to 120 ohms. So what we'll do is we'll redraw the circuit, but we'll combine R2 and R3 into an equivalent resistor, whose resistance is 120 ohms. And now we have R1 and REQ in series with one another, so we can calculate their equivalent resistance by simply adding the two resistances together. Recalling that in series, that is how we obtain the equivalent resistance, just by summing the individual resistances. And when we do that, we obtain an overall equivalent resistance of 360 ohms. So this resistance represents the total resistance of the entire circuit, and therefore we can use it to calculate the total power delivered to the three bulbs. And to do that, we go back to the same power equation that we used earlier, remembering that the potential difference was 120 volts, and that the total resistance was just determined as 360 we can plug in. And when we do so, we get approximately 40 watts will be the total power delivered to the three bulbs. So part A is solved. To solve part B, what we'll do is we'll draw a picture showing the equivalent resistance of R1 and REQ combined together. We had obtained that equivalent resistance, but we never drew the picture of that combined resistance. So let's do that next. Now recall that that total equivalent resistance was 360 ohms and we have the potential difference. What we can calculate is the total current that's flowing through the circuit by using the following relationship. We'll plug in the volts and then the total resistance and we'll see that the total current that's flowing through the circuit ends up being one third of an amp. And so now what we're gonna do is work our way backwards to the original circuit. So when moving backwards through circuits, we have to remember the following two principles which state that when moving backwards to a series arrangement, we need to bring with us the current. So for example, when we move backwards from this resistor to these two, we'll notice that these two are in series with one another. And as a result, we're going to bring with us the current. What we mean by that is that the current for both resistors will be a third of an amp. So we're gonna end up giving a third of an amp to both of those. Before we mention the other principle, we would like to note that on each resistor, Ohm's law applies, which states that volts is equal to current times resistance. So if we took this current and multiplied it by this resistance, we would get 80, and that would be in volts. And then similarly, we take this current, multiply by this resistance, and we get 40 volts. Now, we're gonna continue moving our way backwards. We're gonna move from this resistor backwards to these two, and these two are in parallel this time. And this principle states that when moving backwards to parallel, you will bring the voltage. So this 40 volts that we just calculated will be brought with us. We're gonna put 40 volts on this resistor and 40 volts on this resistor. The other resistor isn't changing, notice, as you go backwards. So when going from R1 to R1, it's not changing. Therefore, we can bring all values with us. We'll bring the 1 3rd amp as well as the 80 volts to here. And that will complete part B of the question. We have 80 volts on R1, 40 volts on R2, and 40 volts also on R3. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you can send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.